Donna, I think I know just the thing that can help you out. Therapy. Hi, girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to be talking about Black and Crew today. I got a chance to sit down and watch the episode, though really wasn't too much, but just enough when it came to Donna, uh, basically versus everybody at this camp getaway. And honestly, it just poses the question, like, Donna, what is your future with Black and Crew? Like, what is it? Because it's not looking good for you right now, sis. It just really isn't. You're just starting to bring a bunch of negative energy, a bunch of passive aggressive, uh, passive aggressive uh, energy. Um, and basically it's like, where do we go from here, Donna? What is your future with Black and Crew? Inquiring minds want to know. So let's go ahead and get into this episode. There really wasn't too much, but just enough to discuss. Honestly, I did catch Donna did a live and it was posted on YouTube. So I will drop that link in the description box. Y'all be able to go check it out. But basically she was talking about these past couple of episodes, how she's kind of looking you know, on the show and she not liking it and basically trying to explain like what was put on the cutting floor, how things are edited, you know, everybody loves to blame some good old editing. Um, so I'll kind of, you know, interweave that in the review when we get to that part. So let's go ahead and talk about it. If you're new to my channel, hey, how you doing? Appreciate you for tuning in. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I appreciate you for clicking on this video though. That's what I do know. And go ahead and hit that like button as well on my Juice Box crew. Hey, y'all be showing up for your girl. I appreciate it always. I love and support. Y'all come back all the time. Let's go ahead and keep this channel growing and you can help by hitting that like button and dropping down in the comment section. Let me know that you stopped by. Um, let's go ahead and get into everything, um, cause I kind of want to talk about some stuff, um, you know, do a separate video and talk about some other things that were kind of happening on, uh, happening this past week. So we open up this episode kind of with Tati and everybody going back into the shop and Tati's basically had enough of this, like Donna coming after her constantly wanting to fight. You could definitely, I was worried like in the beginning when Tati's like, I've changed, you know, COVID has really made me realize, you know, the future I want, you know, people say I've changed. You really just kind of look at them like, mm-hmm. And Donna, I, I mean, and Tati, you definitely can tell like, she's not trying to do this fight for TV shit no more. She's really ready to like progress. And it kind of seems like most people are um, in that stage of growth and Donna's not, is kind of what it's looking like. So she ended up talking to Teddy, Puma, and C's and was like, I don't know what y'all want me to do because I'm trying to be manager. I'm trying to give managerial, you know, orders, not orders, but you know, do my job. And Donna keeps fighting me. Like, you, she want a section, I can't give you a section. Like, you're a freelancer, you're not bringing anything into the shop. What the f do you want from me? I need to give paying customers a spot that's not in a closet. Um... So Steve's basically said he's going to talk to Donna. Puma's, you know, ready to talk to Donna because, like, her being at the house just constantly trying to remind people, like, oh, you must not want me here. Oh, you know, I'm here regardless if you like me or not. Like, it's just kind of real passive aggressive. And I don't like passive aggressiveness because it's like, that sh bothers me. Um, but uh, Teddy, Teddy's girl, Uni, showed up. I guess she had to go to the bathroom. Teddy tried to have her slide in and out because he don't want to ask no questions. Um, but we saw her. Okay, so the uh young bay, young bay is down here. Y'all remember she down here now. Um, so Puma basically is like, look, I know a guy. Um, he can show us around his ranch where they basically kind of like have all this fun for artsy people. Let's go there and try to do some team building. Every time there's a reality TV show, you know they love a good team building moment. Um so everybody goes back to um I think this is when yeah, everybody goes back to the house. Um, they're getting ready to go and um, they're bringing Black Ink Crew New York and Black Ink Crew Atlanta together to try and get everybody to really just meld and become, you know, Black Ink all together because they're still Black Ink regardless of where they're from. So everybody gets there and they put Tati as a team captain and I think his name was like Tro. Or, or something like that as the other team captain. Well, every time Tati tries to say an order or ask them to do something, here comes Donna with this freaking whistle talking about, woo, do like, listen to me, listen to me, this is what we're doing. And immediately Tati's like, here we go again. Like, I think Donna always has this, like, for her, she keeps talking about, oh, respect me, respect me, like, you need to acknowledge me type stuff. 
And her fight to get that is doing the complete opposite. When you are fighting people to be like, ooh, acknowledge me, show me respect. How do you expect to respect somebody who's cussing you out, who's trying to fight you, who's calling you names? Donna, nobody's going to respect the person like that. And I get what you're trying. I get it. Like, I, she clearly has some issues from her childhood of not being seen or dealing with a lot of shit. Like, sh I'm sure she got all that in her background because the way she constantly is bringing up this thing of acknowledgement and respect, I'm going to get my respect one way or another. It's like fighting people doesn't give, get you their respect. It doesn't. Sitting down and having an intellectual, emotional conversation, explaining your point of view without saying, I'm going to fight you, is how you get respect. Donna just hasn't realized that yet. And so when that whole scene came up, it was just like, really like, Donna, how's it not clicking for you yet? So nonetheless, they do the sack race. Tati ends up winning. Everybody kind of just goes on doing their own thing. They're a horse riding. Spider is, you know, catching fish. Um, and so they finally get to the part where, you know, it's like, you know what, let's have a discussion. Who got what to say? Rock ends up having, you know, Ink Dude, I ain't calling him Ink Daddy, um, Bubba Ink apologized to Crystal and he was like, but, you know, it's kind of a lack of respect from you guys, da da da, da. And she's like, and Crystal's like, how do you expect us to respect you? Like, when you're the one who started it, nobody separated us but you. So, miss me with that. Crystal wasn't here for it, but she's like, ooh, but at least my baby Rock, you know, finally had something to stand up for. Okay, Crystal. I'm worried about her, too, because her and Donna damn near the same person, the way they fight. Um, so then, everybody's kind of waiting for Tati and Donna because everybody's like, anybody else? <laughs> anybody else? And then, actually, one, I think the manager from Atlanta was talking about how, um, you know, there was issues with every time she says something, like, one, like, she doesn't like how the tattoo artist, like, is, yeah, Ink Daddy. I think it was Ink Daddy where she was kind of saying, like, you don't respect me type stuff. And you could tell when a man doesn't respect a woman. And the fact that Ink Daddy was kind of doing that with Rock, like, ooh, I ought to take your bitch type stuff. Like, he definitely is a dude who wasn't getting no play when he was in high school. He done got started, you know, got, getting good at tattoos and girls started calling him. And that makes him feel like he play a player from the Himalayas. But, skirt. Psych, no, you not. Um, you gonna have to learn to respect, buddy. Um, so then finally Tati and Donna go, and Tati's like, Look, Donna, I don't know what you want. You keep fighting me, I'm not gonna fight you. Like, what do you want? Like, we're trying to grow like with this, you know, black ink, and I told you what needed to happen. And Donna's getting upset because she's like, Why are you even trying to tell me something when Seeds already told me I had a spot at the shop? She's like, Well, he didn't tell me that, you know, how am I I didn't know what C's told you. Donna is stuck on, C's told me I can have a spot at the shop. But then when they play all these playbacks, it's like, Donna, he didn't really tell you. You just told him what you were doing. And he's constantly, every time you've been asked, what are you doing? What do you want this spot for? What are you trying to achieve? Every time it has been, well, I don't know, just support me. Well, I don't know, I'm going to figure it out. Well, I don't know, like, I'm just going to decorate the space. I don't know, I'll pay you for the space. And it's like, if you're paying me for a space and you're not using it, like, let it be a valid spot. Yes, I'm getting paid, but if you're just sitting there, like, Donna, no. So, she's getting upset to the point where they actually break the fourth wall because people are trying to talk and Donna is just like, man, it's some bullshit. Like, y'all playing around. Y'all some fake-ass people, you know. And the producer finally was like, Donna. And she was like, what? Like, I think, I think the producers have, did give, we're trying to create this opportunity to allow Donna to, to like, find a way to speak, but she's like, no, nah, y'all do this shit every year, we always go doing some team building stuff, and it always go up to shit, it always turns crazy, and it's like, but why though, Donna? Like, if we look at every team building thing, every trip where something has gone off, Donna, it's been you. And she had the live talk about, oh my God, so much shit was cut out. C's told me I had a spot. He even allowed me to decorate it and stuff like that. So I'm tired of looking like, you know, this angry black woman. I'm tired of looking like the person who's unwanted. They didn't want here. If they didn't want me here, why did I have the biggest room? 
God, if we knew you were coming, like if Alex was coming, we knew you were coming. It's not that we didn't know like, oh, Donna wasn't one and she wasn't coming. Bitch, we knew you were coming. The thing is coming for what? And Donna keeps trying to like yell at people like, I'm so sick of this. Like y'all so fake. Like we do this every year. I want my respect. Like y'all need to acknowledge me what I'm doing. And Puma look at her like Donna, like. At some point, when are you going to listen? Tati's like, I can't do this with you. Like, what are we trying to achieve here? So finally, the producer got pissed off. Why does my alarm always go off in the middle of my video? The producer actually starts going off like, no, we're not doing this shit no more. Because Donna, we do give you these opportunities. But here it is. We're trying to actually show. Because she's like, this is what y'all want, right? This is what y'all want. Y'all always want people like, this is why y'all set this shit up, right? And she's like, no, we actually want you to sit down and use being an intelligent person. To have an intelligent show that you are a person who can have intelligent conversation expressing how you feel. When she said that shit, like that should have registered to you like, Okay, maybe I should stop trying to fight people. Maybe I can listen and rebuttal with how I feel. But Donna is not emotionally mature. She's not. If your reaction to every time you don't get your way is to start cussing at people and talk about I want to fight, you can't sit there and blame editing for everything. Like, you're giving them this stuff. That's why I'd be so confused. Like, oh, no, they edit, the, edit that. You said it, though. Like, you're mad at them editing what you gave them regardless of how they edited it you gave them that attitude you gave them i want to fight you get like you gave them that so how are you mad that they're making you look away but that's what you gave them you can't sit there and, and three scenes be like I, what you want to fight and then do a live and be like i'm so tired of looking like the person who's angry and always cause a mess the bitch stop saying you want to fight people then stop arguing with people they can only produce and edit what you give them. Period. So she mad at the producers, basically blaming them for why stuff always goes sideways. Finally, they split directions and everybody just starts talking. Donna's over there crying to Alex, like, I can't believe this. Like, people are so fake. You know, I'm always down for my family. You know, I treat these people, you know, like they real friends. And all I ask for is season support, you know, what I want to do. And it's like, you would have got season support, but like, you got to understand they can't, because they don't support you the way you see it fit, the way you see it being done, doesn't mean they can't support you in other ways. Donna wants it how she wants it. And if you don't do it that way, then fuck you type attitude. And it's like, that's not how life goes. So Puma, Teddy, and C's are over there talking like, man, what do we do? Because like, what what is this with, with Donna? Like, is she... What is her future at Black Ink? Because she wants us to support her. I offer the support, but like, you want me to give you a booth and you're not making any money or you're not doing anything? And Ted did kind of say something. He's like, she keeps talking about, oh, day one, she's been riding for us. And it's like, you ain't really been here day one. Like, you want, she's entitled. Donna feels entitled to some type of hierarchy because she might have been here the longest out of, you know, the newer castmates. But the thing is, Donna, I think you're confusing, you know, the shop working at the shop for working for the show. Because in her confession, she's like, I, you know, they need to start acknowledging me as an integral part of this, as a part of the shop and a part of the TV show. Like, you're confusing making TV with working in the shop. Like, they're two different things. So Donna finally calls Alex and Donna over. He's like, look, Donna, like, I don't know what you want. Tell me what you're like, what are you looking for? And she's like, I want you to acknowledge, like, you know, my importance here. You said I could have a spot in the booth. He's like, I asked you so many times and you still couldn't tell me. Donna, you were asked, I don't know how many times. And every time it was, I don't know, let me figure it out. It's you want to do hair. You want to do CBD. Like, you can't sell hair at a fucking tattoo shop, Donna, really? 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 The CBD juices could have been a thing, for real. Drink you some CBD juice while you're getting a tattoo. But you're so focused on the other stuff, the drama part of it, versus, okay, let me just put my foot with this one thing. You're trying to dibble and dabble in 600 different things. The master of all is honestly the master of none. Start with the CBD stuff. You could have brought the refrigerator, but no, you brought fucking 300 pounds of weave. 
you could have went down and got dang, uh, what's it called? Uh, kiosk store or whatever. Rent center errands. Lowe's got you a little mini fridge and had some CBD juices in the shop. Like, I'm just not understanding. So she's like, oh, you know, I've been here for a long time. Y'all not respecting me, what I do. You know, I ask for support. You know, I'm doing all so much stuff. Okay, she's just like, like what? Okay, well, I got a clothing line. I got weave. I got my CBD juices. You know, I'm even setting up a casting call for my website. Let me use your spot for a casting call thing. He's like, no. She's like, why? It's an open shop. You can't let me use it for two hours. No. Okay. I'll give you a little bit, Donna. You know what? Seeds, I've been here for a minute. Like, you can't honestly give me two hours at the tattoo shop. But here's the thing. Whether it's at the tattoo shop or if it's at just another place, the fact is Black Ink is helping facilitate that, right? You're so stuck on getting it how you want it that you're blind to the fact that maybe they can offer help another way. But like you're talking out of both sides of your neck because on one side, I don't need black ink. I don't need them. You know, I can do this on my own. Then on the other side, why don't you support me? Like, like you need to show up for me like I'm showing up for y'all. And it's like, but they got to show up in their own way. You know, might not be able to use the shop, Donna. But if he shows, hey, on his Instagram or like he's constantly promoting, hey, go show up for my girl, Donna. What the fuck does it matter that it's at the black ink shop? Like you're not seeing the bigger picture. You're so focused on your aspect of stuff that you're really not seeing the bigger picture. So Teddy had to put her in place because she's like, he's like, I mean, see, because she's like, day, I've been here so long. Y'all not showing me respect. He's like, I've been with high school with Puma. Teddy actually was with me when I opened the first shop. What do you want credit for being the worst tattoo artist in black ink history? You don't tattoo at the shop. You mad to my, I've been here at 11 in the morning. Uh, to four, uh, to eleven in the morning to four in the morning. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do if you're working. But you really wasn't tattooing, Donna. Let's keep it real. Um. So now at this point, she mad. Tease is mad. They go their separate ways. Everybody goes back to the house and is honestly like trying to figure out where to go from here. Teddy talks to Alex because he was talking to Spider and he was like, I just don't know like what we supposed to do at this point. Like we want to build Black Ink together. But Donna is just not like really like she's not saying she's not bringing necessarily anything in general. And I don't know what's going on with her because her energy just been so, you know, whack and messed up lately. And um, Alex walks in. He's like, look, Alex, like, what's going on with Donna? Can you tell me like, what is it? He's like, is she mentally like, okay. And he was kind of like, you know, nah. He was like, okay, like, that makes sense. Donna, Alex, you know, saying like, you know, she's been through a lot. She's dealing with a lot of family stuff. I'm sure she's got, you know, I'm sure she's taking care of her family. She said in her life, she's like, I take care of people. On her life, she was talking about, oh my God, I've missed so much of my family time. You know, spending time with my nephews. Like, I got so much going on in my life. Like, y'all think I'm going to show up to a place that, you know, I'm not necessarily wanting with people I don't like who are fake as fuck. Like, you think I want to do that? But then on the other end, it's like, I enjoy making TV for y'all. So, Donna, you know what you're doing is making TV, right? Like, you are aware of that because you said in your life, I enjoy making TV for y'all. So, you do some of your things as a reaction knowing that it's going to be a good part of the show. You have been rewarded for the fighting and the attitude, so you keep doing it subconsciously. But then are mad that you are perceived as this angry woman always ready to fight but when Tati said one thing that you didn't like, what was your first go-to? Bitch, we fighting. Like, you can't have it both ways, Donna. And then you're mad to her, oh, I thought these people were my friends. You know, they just turned on me. And everybody in the comments of the live was like, but didn't you do that shit to Kitty, though? Like, you flipped on, you flip on a lot of people, Donna. Like, it's, what goes around comes around. So, yes, you are stressed and going through so much in life, but like, you got to handle your situations of like contention better. You're mad at how they're showing you, but you're giving them that. Just remember that. They can only show, all the people want to blame editing, You can. they can only show what you give them. So we see a little cute little yang 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 between Rock and Crystal. They tattooing their initials on each other. Fucking stupid. I don't agree with, I nan, never tattoo nobody name on me because that is just, no 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 not to the glory of the kingdom no ma'am 
But it was a cute little thing. Although Crystal says, you know, Rock is for her. You know, his calmness. She really needs to start appreciating, you know, that he isn't out here wilding. Like, she needs to understand, like, that's good for her. Crystal gonna break Rock heart. I honestly do. I think she gonna find a dude who, who gonna tell her, oh, you know, I can offer more than that nigga. Like, what he gonna give you? She gonna like how he's a little bit more hood because that's what girls go for. And she gonna break Rock's heart. She gonna break his heart. I'm calling it now. Um... After that, you know what, Alex, too? Like, Alex, I think you're not doing Donna any favors by also giving her constructive criticism of how she's handling situations. This old big mama, first of all, we'll call her big mama. This shit's weird. Um, but, oh, you know, oh, big mama, like, she just not getting the respect that she earns, you know, fake people this and fake people that. Like, you need to tell Donna to calm the fuck down when she's doing all this going, this going ham. Like, Sit down and talk. Like, have an intelligent conversation. Like, you are yelling at people and mad that they're not respecting you. You're not respecting nobody who's yelling at you. So why would you expect that from them? Um. So when you see everybody, you know, just talking downstairs, everybody's like, dang, it's kind of quiet. Like, what's going on? And Tati's like, I think, you know, what you call it, they gone. I think Virginia, and, I mean, not Virginia. I think, uh... Donna and Alex are gone. Show enough, packed up, bed was done. Oh, there was a little part about uh, about Bay. You know, Bay uh, came down to Atlanta and was dealing with like that Asian hate situation. First of all, can we stop doing hashtags that have to do with the victims? Like, I get it, stop Asian hate, but what we really started calling is hashtag stop domestic terrorism. Hashtag stop cracker ass crackers. Hashtag stop white nationalism that's what the hashtags need to be y'all try to pretty it up stop asian hate no it's not pretty they white people out here get, choosing to kill mass loads of people because they had a bad day of fucking work like that shit's annoying um but i get it but look that's another video all i'm trying to say is quit trying to pretty it up because it's an ugly situation stop asian hate needs to be stop domestic terrorism Stop killing black folks needs to be stop white nationalism. Stop KKK. Like, stop Proud Boys. That's what it needs to be. Because now they get to just slide under the rug. Because we're focused on the victim aspect of it and not the problem, right? But like I said, that's another video. But nonetheless, Bay had been dealing with like some racism stuff. And she's like, I don't want, I don't feel safe. Her baby Nico is just the cutest. Where the hell the baby daddy at? at? Where, where, where Chris? I couldn't remember his name. Where Chris at? We need to find him. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, Virginia, why well, keep on? Donna and Alex end up leaving, blocking everybody. And at this point, they MIA. And it's like, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. And Donna's sitting here crying in her life, like, oh, nobody understand me. You know, I can't believe I keep putting up with this. Like, why am I going places where I can't, I can't trust nobody? You know, I've just been dealing with so much lately. And it's like, nobody's telling you to come back though, Donna. If you don't need it, why do you keep coming back? And I'm also confused. If you've been on the show this long, have you not established anything yet? Both you and Walt is what I'm confused about. Have y'all not established a contract where y'all getting paid more than like paid substantially? And have you not established like you have been on Black Ink Crew this long? Why are you so vying for their support of something when you're Black Ink Crew down to like, Go do it on your own. Walt, go do it on your own. Like, y'all don't need them. Like, believe in yourself and go push on your own. And if they support you, they support you. If they don't, fuck them. Like, to keep fighting for people who you keep, like, you keep saying are fake, like, it's just confusing. That means you really are trying to hang on to this black ink situation. And, like, I'm just so confused how y'all been on the show this long and have not established your own something separate. Like the minute I'm on the show, if I make it to season two, two and a half, three, bitch, I got something going. Period. That's just what it is. Um, and the fact that y'all haven't like between you, Walt, like Teddy, like what is going on with y'all outside of Black Ink Crew? But um, like I said, that's pretty much the show. Uh, the link of Donna's live is in the description box. Y'all go check that out so y'all can see what she was talking about. And we just gonna have to see how things go uh, going forward from what I saw next week. Uh, season Suzette ain't looking too good. I don't like that bitch. I don't like how she went after Cheyenne. Just like Teddy said, like, that's just foul. And she, uh, she sees you got some explaining to do when it comes to fixing your child's mess. Because that was fucked up. 
Y'all need some Iyana Van Zandt, period. But that was this episode, you guys. Tell me how you feel about Donna going off on Tati. Do you guys feel like Donna, you know, is earned respect? Is she, you know, is she doubting what she's saying with how long she's been on the show? Um, how do you guys feel about Alex? Do you guys feel like Alex is an enabler to Donna and her attitude? Um, and last but not least, do you guys think Crystal and Rock are going to last? Do you really think that, uh, you know, these two can make it the long haul? Drop down in the comments and let me know. Appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, make sure to like, tag, post, all that good stuff. And I'll catch y'all in the next video. Deuces.